bit about why the Tatas are unique or what prompted me to write about the Tatas. That is because of their model of business, the structure of business that they have. Very often it is believed that the Tatas are not the most wealthy or most wealth creating business organization in India. That's incorrect. Mr. Ratan Tata may not be the wealthiest businessman in India and I'll tell you why. The Tata structure is as follows. There are 100 Tata companies out of which 29 are publicly held and 71 are privately held. Of these 29, we have eminent names like TCS, Tata Steel, Tata Motors, Tata Communications, Tata Chemicals, Titan, Voltas, Rallis, Taj Hotel, the Rambagh Palace is here. All of these are Tata companies with 30 to 70 percent ownership by Tata Sons, which is the holding company. Tata Sons, in turn, is owned 67 percent by the Tata Trusts which are public charitable trusts. And as per the government's mandate, public charitable trusts have to spend 85% of their earnings for social welfare and charity. 0.8% of Tata Sons is owned by Mr. Ratan Tata, 0.8%. So now you have a model in front of you, 30 to 70% of the profits of Tata companies as dividends go to Tata Sons and 67% of Tata Sons dividends go to Tata Trusts and 85% of that money is spent for society, charity and philanthropy. And this is a virtuous cycle which has been in position since 100 years and this is a virtuous cycle in perpetuity because this is a legally mandated system by those who have bequeathed the Tata Trusts with this kind of wealth. So you know forever and more the kind of profits that the Tatas make will get converted into the quantum of money that will get back to society. As of now, the Tata Trusts and the Tata companies through CSR spend 2,000 crores every year for charity and social welfare. As Tatas make more money, as India grows fivefold, this amount will grow fivefold. And in my research, I haven't come across an equivalent model in India where business is for creating wealth and sharing it for society. By and large, businesses are used as avenues to bequeath wealth to the next generation. This makes Tata's very unique, and as the late JRD Tata, the only businessman to win the Bharat Ratna had said, Tata's are a national institution. Unlike other business houses which make money and establish more businesses, the Tata's will remain an institution for India because that's what its structure mandates. How many business houses complete 150 years? We may not even remember two or three names, but the names of the Tatas definitely comes because they've just celebrated their 150th year. Another business family from the 19th century was Premchand Roychan family. Jamsaji Tata had incidentally worked at Premchand Roychan before he started his own independent venture. The fourth generation of Premchand Roychan still exists. They, in 2014, had sales of 83 crore rupees. In the same year, the Tatas had a revenue or sales of 6,50,000 crore rupees. So you have two business houses of the same time period, one run by subsequent generations of the family, one run by trusts and the subsequent generations of the family are trustees of the business house. And you see the kind of growth and difference in terms of the volume and the scale at which the Tatas have worked. So it can undeniably said that the Tatas have achieved not only the dream of India's industrialization, but also the dream of India's globalization. Today, the Tata Group is the largest employer in Britain, with Tetley, Chorus, and Jaguar Land Rover being owned by the Tatas. So imagine one of the largest employers or the largest employers in Great Britain is an Indian business house. That's how the Tatas make India proud. I'd like to quote Professor Grass of the Harvard Business School, who was the founder of the academic discipline of business history. And in 1949, he had this to say, and I'll quote, Tatas have done much to introduce industrial capitalism in India in place of the old mercantile and petty capitalism. As the companies progressed, they socialized the business by transferring much of the ownership to charitable trusts. And we in our time have thought that we, America, were the original contributors in some of this socialization from within. In 1949, Professor Grass observed that not America but India has been pioneer in socializing business while contributing to industrialization. This is quite a compliment to India and its way of business.